Okay, so when you start doing a gesture drawing, the first thing you really want to look at is the overall position or action of the figure. And in this case, he's kind of tilted to one side a little bit, leaning against the couch. He's got his head bowed to one side. And then I am using my sight stick and I'm trying to lay in what we call plumb lines. And those are lines that go kind of the length of the body. They're very straight up and down or sometimes straight side to side but you compare where things line up on the human body. So in this case, I'm gonna give you a couple of photos here of what my view looks like because you're kind of looking over my shoulder. So when I'm doing this, I laid the stick right at the outside corner. You can see the edge of his hair and his outside of his wrist was there. And then I looked at his left shoulder and where his hand was going into his pocket. The next thing we look at are called axis lines, and that's the shift of the main parts like the shoulders and the hips. And because he's kind of twisted a little bit, his uh, shoulders tilt right and his hips tilt to the left. And so I'm using my sight stick to get a handle on what those angles look like. And then I'm gonna move down into his legs and try to get an idea of where the angles are um, it is a gesture. Sometimes you get things not quite right. That's okay. Don't sweat the small stuff and don't worry about going back through. So right here I'm using the sight stick again. I'm taking a look at the thigh and the shin bones and trying to get an idea of the general angles. And he's crossed one foot over in front of the other. So I'm also kind of looking at some different things. So right here's the thigh and it's at an angle. And the other one, the shin is at more of an angle. And then I wanted to see kind of a comparison. So I used the stick sideways to see where the ankles set in comparison to one another. And then I go back and I start looking at the overall structure and I'm just using circles to represent the shoulder joint um, and kind of a little oval to represent where the elbow bends. And then I'm just gonna put it together and you can see that I am using what we call an overhand grip with my pencil. So I'm not holding it like a traditional way that you would hold a pen or a pencil. Um, this is kind of more like you would hold chalk, but it forces you to draw more from the shoulder and less from your fingers and your hands. And it's, again, developing that hand-eye coordination um, and keeping you loose so you don't get so tight. When I get into some more details, um, once I've kind of got the basic structure, I may switch over. But when I first start, I kind of start with that overhand grip and Try and keep it loose. We're not after perfection. We're after quickly getting in the motion of the body, the action of the scene, the general proportion. And we're really, really working on that hand-eye coordination and that forcing ourselves to really focus on that subject for several minutes without getting distracted. So right here, I had established enough of it that I flipped over and started using more detail, which you can see immediately, I lay my hand down. Um, when you turn that grip over, there's a tendency to immediately want to put that hand down on the surface.
and I got the length of the upper leg a little too short when I did the initial drawing. So right here without erasing, I am going back through and just drawing right over the top where those lines actually belong. Double checking myself here, with my side stick. When you hold your sight stick, always extend the arm fully. Don't let your elbow bend in that arm that has the sight stick um, because that will change every time you pick it up if you let the elbow bend and you don't want the distance to change. And the other key to the sight stick is closing one eye. 